Hi and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today, no matter what it is you're doing. For the tutorial here on YouTube today, I want to share for you a technique-led demonstration. Now I've been working with wire for around about nine or ten years now in my jewellery making, and one of the techniques which I use almost every day is a figure of eight weave. Now it's one of the more basic weaves in wire wrapping or wire working, and I want to share the basics of the technique, but also show you how it can be used for a really chunky design like this and it really doesn't take very long to build up at all. So let's head down to the board, we'll have a look at the piece I'm going to show you how to create and I'll also show you a step-by-step -step way to create your own figure of eight weave in wire. So I have a couple of very, very rustic Labradorite hearts to work with. The Labrador essence is quite lovely, but the shaping and finish is quite rustic. And I thought it would be lovely to show you how not only to do the figure of eight weave, but how you can use it in a very, very simple design to capture a chubby cabochon or really any other rock with a little bit of a waist to it. So this is what we're going to work towards on our tutorial today. But let's get down to the nuts and bolts of how to do a figure of eight weave. I'll just pop those up at the top for a second and I'll show you a piece of closed up figure of eight weaving which I'm going to use a little bit later on. So this is two parallel wires and this is a 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge wire and I've used a 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge wire to create this little figure of eight or almost a ladder like weave. Now if you do your weave incredibly tight up together like this you get this enormously shiny beautiful piece which you can use but it is also possible to create this weave in an open fashion and if I show you just quickly here that's how I have created the weave on the side of this chubby heart pendant just to show that you can make something like this really very quickly whilst getting to grips with the weave you can of course close that back up so if you create the weave in a very very tight fashion you get this kind of ladder like effect or you can create it in that slightly more open effect now in order to show you in a big screen fashion I'm going to use two marker pens as my parallel wires. Now you can use any type of wire that you like. I tend to work with a raw copper and as I say I would be working with a 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge. I also use my finer gauge wire directly off the spool or off the reel. So I'm going to take the tail of the wire and I'm going to wrap that Let's just ignore the very end of the wire just there because wire will sit around the, the heavier gauge wire whereas the thread won't work in the same way. So I'm just going to tuck that out of the way. And to begin with I'm going to wrap three times around one of my wires. So it's wrapped all the way around. That's another thing that wire won't do, it won't come loose on you hopefully. Let's just unspool some of that thread. And I'm going to bring that wire all the way around and take it up the middle between my two rods or marker pens in this instance and I'm just going to put them side by side now so I can keep some tension on that thread. So I've got three wraps around the lower of my two rods and then I'm bringing the thread up the centre and I'm going to wrap that three times around that upper rod keeping that nice and tight. We'll scooch those pretend wires up neatly, bring that wire <laughs> in this instance thread up the middle and switch to the opposite rod, or in this instance, pen. And then I'm going to wrap three times around the lower one, bring that wire back up the centre, and wrap three times around the upper rod. Now what we're trying to do here is to keep tension on these, and you will end up pushing each of these three little wraps together as you go through to keep them neat and tidy always switching the direction of the finer gauge wire. So in this instance it's the thread, I'm going to wrap three times around that lower one, keeping that nice and tight, not crossing them over at any stage, and then switching to the upper rod in the opposite direction. So when you're doing this with a wire, those will fit neatly and hold tightly around your cores. They won't go all flappy and gappy like my thread has done. But that's the essence of the figure of eight weave. I am now going to show you with actual wire, but that was for those of you who've been asking for an absolute beginner's guide. So I have here 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge wire, and I just need to give that a little bit of a smooth through to make sure that it's straight. 
This is an antique bronze colourway with a copper core. You can use whichever wire you want. It does pay to try different types and tempers, different types of wire in terms of material and different tempers in, sort of in, in terms of whether they are soft or hard or if they've been fully annealed and they're really, really soft. If you wanted to, you could use a straight nut tool. And the correct usage of this is to pop the wire in the centre and pull that all the way through. I use it in a slightly different way if I want to super harden my wire, but that's a different tutorial altogether. So I've got my two rods, they're about nine inches in length. I'm now going to bring in my weaving wire. So I'm going to use some rose gold colour wire that I have available. Just taken the wrong end off the spool. Classic. This is in a 0.4mm gauge with a rose gold colourway. And what I'm going to do is wrap three times around the lower of my two rods. So I'm going to imagine that I want to fill the middle third of my rods with my wire weave. I'm going to allow a couple of inches to sit over the top of that lower wire. And I'm going to pull the wire tightly around the lower of my two rods, scooching those wires up neatly. And my wire now is going down the centre of the two imaginary rods. Let's bring that second rod in. And what I'm going to do is to put a gap into the design. Now, when I'm creating a section, a long section of weave like this, what I need to focus on is keeping those two rods, the heavy gauge wire, the same distance apart all the way through my weaving. If you are going to be using a chubby cab or a heavy stone, something like this, you will need to make that quite a wide gap as well, so it can securely hold the piece inside later. If you bring that too close together, you'll end up with a very pretty piece of weaving, but it won't accommodate a chubby or heavy stone like so. So the finer gauge wires come over the top of my lower rod. It's gone down the middle, so that means it has to come underneath the upper rod. I'm going to start off by doing a relatively open figure of eight weave. So what I'm looking for here is a diagonal shape, a diagonal stripe. And we're going to wrap a second time, making sure that those wires don't cross over. If they do, you can just undo that one turn, bring it back round and we're looking to spiral around neatly, tidily, like so. Now in a second I'm going to show you a way that you can have a tool to help you hold these two rods at the same distance apart, but for now I'm going to show you how to achieve that without any tools. So what I tend to do is use my little finger just to adjust the distance, and I will do that multiple times throughout my weaving. So I've switched over the direction of that wire, it's come over the top of the upper wire, down the centre, underneath the lower wire, and I've wrapped three times now. I will need to tighten those coils up to make sure that they are neat and tidy. And what I'm looking to do is to keep A, the same distance between the two rods, but also the same angle on the little stripes that I'm creating, those little diagonal stripes. So I'm going to pinch that very firmly with my non-dominant hand and we're going to call an end to the weaving in this direction right now. Quite happy that those distances are staying the same all the way through, tightening up that coil and we're going to grab those flush cutters or semi-flush cutters, trim away the wire just inside the design and then tighten up that end section. Like so, give that a little bit of a scooch. So you'll see I'm looking to keep those angles the same kind of distance from one another and the angles need to be the same, obviously in reverse. And then what I'm going to do is flip the whole thing around. Now I'm right dominant, so I tend to make a start on my piece, weave off towards the right. And then what I'm going to do, and you'll notice that I'm weaving from the spool with the finer gauge wire, is flip the whole thing over so that I'm looking at the other side with your figure of eight weave. It's the same view from both directions. This is not always true with all weaves. The piece of jewellery I'm wearing right now contains a variation of my spike weave. It looks very different on the back to how it does on the front. But with your figure of eight weave, it's going to look the same in both directions. So I'm going to unspool a little bit of extra wire and get that spool off the screen. And what we're looking to do is obviously not kink the wire because that would be rubbish. But we're looking to have three visible wraps on the lower of our two strong rods 
and then three visible wraps on the upper. Now one of the tools that you can use to help you with a figure of eight weave is a ring clamp and that sounds contrary because we're not making a ring today, we're making a pendant. This is the ring clamp that I have, I got it from a tool sale very many years ago. It has a bit of faux suede in the jaws and it has a wing nut apparatus to tighten it. You may find some very traditional ring clamps, instead of having the wing nut, it pivots at a point just here and you pop a metal, uh, sorry, a wooden wedge in the far end and the pivot then creates a closing at the clamp end. So either of those will work in exactly the same way, it's just a slightly different looking tool. So what I'm going to do is to clamp my wire work in the jaws of my ring clamp and I want to make sure that that's opened up enough so that when I pop that first little bit of wire weaving in I don't disrupt it. I'm then going to tighten the wing nut until my wires are securely held into position. Now you will find that you need to move the section you're weaving along quite frequently so you'll get used to opening and closing that and then once you've had some practice at keeping these two rods parallel like train tracks or tram tracks you may even feel that you wish to dispense with your ring clamp technique but it can be a really handy way to learn how to get that distance set. Also making sure that your wires are strong enough. When I first started wire weaving I would use quite a floppy wire here and I'd end up with all kinds of awfulness undulating in and out and it really stressed me out. So I'm trying today to give you an absolute beginner's instructional as to how you can make this slightly less painful. So let's just support the whole thing and I'm going to wrap three times around that upper rod. You'll notice now that as we are on the other side of our piece of weaving, when I bring that wire down the center, it's going off one side, over the top and down in the middle, so it needs to come underneath the other one. So you're always switching from one direction to the next. And then you can just support that lower wire whilst you wrap three times. And you can get very, very fast indeed with this. Now, if you wanted to replicate the tight weave like so, you don't use those angles, you simply weave backwards and forwards. So let's just tighten that into a straight line, I'm just scooching that coil along and this is just a demonstration piece that I'm working with right now. You wouldn't want to change necessarily between open weave and closed weave in the same piece. You might find that that's something that you do want to do. As you work through your, more of your own designs, you'll find ways in which you can vary your type of figure of eight weaving. But for now, I'm going to show you that you can quite quickly build up a closed weave. So that's three around the lower, three around the upper. If I want to switch this to a closed weave, I need to bring that in really firmly. Make sure that I'm not bringing these two wires any closer together. So let's open that ring clamp and I'm going to move that along and hold it right against the edge of the jaws of my ring clamp. And then I can very, very quickly move through and create quite a tight weave in that figure of eight fashion. Once I've got those three wraps, I'm going to tighten up against the ring clamp, switch to the upper wire, always switching directions. So that's two and that's three. I want to show you a pitfall of working with wire from the spool. If you don't keep it in a little bag, it all gets a little bit wild and chaotic. So I've got dozens and dozens of little plastic clip lock bags that have been donated to me by a local jeweller and when I'm working at home I do tend to just keep my wire in a bag and only unspool the next few inches that I'm working with. So there's a little hint for you. <laughs> so quite quickly you will be able to build up your very very neat and tidy and also quite closed up weave. You can gently prise those rods apart to make sure that they're sitting at the right distance and it's then just a case of opening up the ring clamp and moving the section of weave along until you get as much or as little as you need. So let's just open that up. You may find that you don't want to use the ring clamp. Excuse me, we have a traveller. There we go. Little fly. Didn't really want him to get hurt with the wires on the board. So you may find, as I say, that you want to do a much more closed weave or you may find that you want to do an open weave. What I would say is that the distance between the two wires will change 
if you are doing an open weave and then to a closed weave what you may be able to see is that it's flaring and that's because the straight line distance is obviously shorter than that angled distance that sounds very very confusing all I would say is when you're practicing make sure that your wires here and here are strong work with a nice soft and supple wire I tend to use 0.426 gauge and that's how you build up your figure of eight weave so that's the nuts and bolts of your figure of eight weave. As I say, you can do that at a nice jaunty little angle so it's open, or you can do that really nice and tight. To begin with, just take your time. It does take a few, a few minutes to build up a couple of inches of weaving, but it's absolutely worth it putting that precision into it. Let's head back down to the board and I'll show you what you can do with that length of weaving you've just practiced. So I have a length of uh, weaving here and I did a, a closed up weave this is using raw copper in 1.25 or 16 gauge and 0.4 or 26 gauge once i've got my section of weaving whether that be nice and open at angles or fully closed up as this piece is what i'm going to do is very gently make a little bit of a furrow just using the tips of my thumbs and i find that using the tips of my thumbs makes a nice gentle little dish shape and I'll tip this onto its end in just a second rather than using tools if you use a tool to do this you can end up with some rather shape sharp wire deformations which isn't quite as pretty as this little gentle furrow that we're creating so if I tip that over to the back you can see there's just a little bit of shine let's see if I can show you from up the top Let's hang, bang the camera there. It's a very, very small distance that I'm just pushing into the wire just to make a nice little furrow, I suppose, as if you were planting seeds like that to start a way of capturing that cabochon. Now my wire's got a little bit out of shape there, but it's been dropped on the floor a few times, so that's hardly a surprise very very gentle little basket we've made for it the next thing we're going to do is to find the center not necessarily the center of your wires these are slightly offset but the center of your woven section and what we're going to do is put a little bend on either side with the furrow facing outwards that is actually the worst pliers in the world to use for this let me grab my bent uh, my straight chain nose pliers rather so i'm going to support across the dead center of that weaving section and just bend that up slightly. You may find that you prefer to do this with your thumbnail. Certainly in raw copper, it's easy enough to do, but if you struggle, you can use your pliers just to get those bends in. You may prefer to do one side at a time. So you can see at the moment that front V is deeper. If you flip that around, you can then do the same little bend on the other side to bring them up to be more equal. So let's put our stone into position and that's just going to sit gently down at the base like a little bit of basket. And what you will also notice is that I haven't completely woven all the way around the design. The weaving just covers the shoulders of my design and that's because I want to have a nice open section up at the top for the shoulders of the stone to peek out. Now, dependent on what the shape of the stone is that you're working with, you could weave a little bit further around if you wanted to. I just want to make sure that my stone isn't too fat and that it will indeed be kept into position by that little basket that we've made. That looks pretty neat and tidy to me. So what I'm going to do now is put a little bit of warmth and heat into the wires at the front of the design and just allow them to skirt around over the front surface of that heart shape. Now obviously if you're working with a slightly differently shaped stone you may prefer to use a slightly different aesthetic model but I'm going to trace that heart shape. The main thing is that the scoop of wire is over the front surface of the gem or in this instance the back surface whichever way you're facing it. Let's just hold that into position again scooch that weaving up nice and firmly make sure it's as far down into that basket as it can go warm those wires and then draw them over the surface of that gemstone. This is important because it really needs to hold the gem in position and we're just kind of clamping it into place. So let's just curve those around a little bit. So you can see that sits over the surface of the gem. Flip that onto the other side. We may need to bring those wires down a little bit more. 
like so and like so. The next bit is a little bit heart in mouth. If you are concerned about your gemstone at all, please be very, very gentle. So what I'm going to do is to take hold of the, one of those side wires just before it meets in the middle. Now, as I let go, the gem may drop out. Doesn't matter if it does. I'm just going to push that up in a straight line for now and we'll adjust that in a second. I'm going to do the same thing on the far side and just here and just here. So they are all going to be in exactly the same position. Now, because I'm right dominant, I then need to turn that up the other way because I know I have better control with my right hand than I do with my naughty arthritic left hand. So I'm going to hold the wire in position, being gentle for the gemstone's sake, making sure that I don't mark the wire overly, but more importantly that I don't mark the gemstone. It's easier to start with a new piece of wire than it is to take your gem back to a lipidurist and have that brushed out if you accidentally scratch the surface. So do always be careful. I'm going to repeat the same manoeuvre on the other side now. And this design is really a from any direction design. So I'm going to call it the front or the back according to how I feel at that precise moment. Same thing on the other side. Just going to make sure that I have a good grip on the wire without scratching that gemstone. And then we have our little basket. Heart shape is already made. All that remains is to tie these four upright wires together and you can really do that exactly how you want to. But if you wanted a bit more guidance and appreciating that today's video is more about the weave than it is the finished product, if you want to follow along, what I'm going to do is grip those wires and then just push them back towards the middle. I'm going to stick that one between for now. And then I'm going to do the same just here, like so. So you can see I'm creating a little bit of a housing to hold that stone in position. Exactly the same on the other side. Probably need to bring that down ever so slightly. And there's a little bit of a gap between where I created that bend and where I create the next bend. Draw those over as well. So what will happen is that these will all come together and you can bring them upright and finish off your bale exactly how you see fit. So let's just have a look at how I finish this one off. So all I've done here is I've taken two of my wires that stick up, turned them into an upright and woven it with a classic three and three figure of eight weave, which you now have intimate details on how you can achieve. And then the other two wires from the other side just wrapped around and there's a coil on either surface. So you can finish that off if you want to call it a day, feel free to log off. But I will show you just the next little step if you want to. So I have gripped a hold of a couple of those wires. I'm just going to gently splay these ones out a little bit. I've moved them out of where they need to end up, but it's just so that you can more easily see the next step of finishing this piece. I'm going to grip those two wires and pull upright firmly. So the next stage of this tutorial, if you wanted to follow along, would be to, let me just straighten those wires up so they sit side by side, do a little bit more figure of eight weaving on this section. And then these two rods will wind around that upright. That is all there is to it. It's a simplistic design, but hopefully it will fully explain that figure of eight weaving to you. So if you're happy to stop there, do by all means stop there and I'll see you again very, very soon. For the rest of you who want to see how this pendant turns out, I'm going to do a little bit of figure of eight weaving up that centre and then I'll join you back down on the board and show you how to finish this particular design off. So I'm working again from the spool. This is 0.4mm or 26 gauge and this is raw copper wire. And the two uprights that are coming up the dead centre of my little heart shaped chubby stone. What I'm going to do is a 3 in 3 weave now. So I'm going to wrap a couple of times around one of those uprights. And I'm doing it all the way up at the top so it's easier for you to see. What I need to do is make sure that that is nice and neat and tidy and that it has a good grip on that upright wire. So that's a lot easier for you to do when you don't have to worry about the angle of the camera. I'm just going to make sure that that is indeed neat and tidy because I might want to wear this one myself. I do love Labradorite and I do like heart shapes. So once I've got that little three wrap all the way around, I'm going to scooch it down almost all the way to that last little angle that we created. I'm going to pull those side by side and just do a little bit more of my three and three 
figure of eight weave. Opening out those end wires will help and I want this to be as close together as possible so I'm just going to pull that nice and tight opening out those wires again as you need to two and three scooch those wires down as you go flipping to the other side one and two and three flip to the other side one and two and three whoops missed down the center so that's three on this side down the center underneath the lower of those two rods and then one and two and three and what I will do now is just continue all the way along until I get to here and I'll show you how to finish that bale so I've done my three and three or figure of eight weave a couple of inches maybe an inch and a half and I've left a length of around about half an inch at least on the far end of the wire here just to make sure I've got a way of tying everything together so the first thing I want to do is to make sure that both of those little dips are indeed in front of the gemstone so if you need to just draw those down slightly then take your time don't scratch your gemstone and what we're going to do now is tie the piece together so I need to quite firmly pinch those little collar angles that I've just created and just made sure are safe whilst I draw one of the wires round in one direction give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze and I'll just show you that's wrapped all the way around that core and then the other wire across in the opposite direction and then back into the gap on this side so we have tied everything together you can just very gently tighten those little shoulders up if you need to same on the other side what you will see is that the gemstone is safely encased in that basket that we've created with our figure of eight weave and it's kept safe at the front and at the back whichever is whichever by those little dips up at the shoulder so you can always give that a little bit of extra just be careful of that gemstone and I'm going to tie that very firmly now by squishing those two wires down if you're concerned that that feels loose at all you can bring the wire around for another turn and then we have a tail on both sides let's bring that one over as well give that a squish and a squeeze there's a tail of wire here that you can use to create this little coil that sits down over the front section so just make sure that that is neat and tidy I'll just do the one side because it's the same from here on on both sides so let's find those round nose pliers get that coil to start moving around didn't quite create a full circle there so I'm just going to push that until it sits where I need it to it's quite an open center there because it's quite a heavy wire but you can play with that and adjust it to your aesthetic needs bring that coil to the center and then just push it down over that front section and that will be the same for this other wire that's sitting just here so if I just draw that over for a second you would do the exact same thing the coil might sit slightly higher but I'm not overly worried about whether it sits a little bit higher I just want to know that my gemstone passes the shake test and isn't going to go anywhere if at some point this is too loose and baggy you can employ these spare wires I'm going to bring this one down over the surface of the gem like so I might trim a tiny amount of wire off the end here into the scrap pot if you are concerned that your gemstone isn't completely housed securely we can create a little bit of a low down dropping coil and just sit that gently over the surface of the gem if it concerns you you can even wire using a little bit of that 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge wire it to that little shoulder bit of the frame but to complete the very very simple bale I'm just going to strengthen and straighten that piece of woven wire pull that forwards whichever direction you see forwards to be I'm going to grab my bell makers and create a round form now these are slightly smaller than the space I have available which is why I'm being a bit funny handed with it well, let's open those two end sections out this is the simplest way you can finish off a little woven bale like this and draw it around until it sits neatly I've completely mangled that so I'm just going to open it back out you can do a little bit of a rescue job let's grab a pen instead slightly larger than my bale makers probably the right fit for the job that's a little bit better anything is a mandrel if you need it to be 
and then get that to sit more neatly. So I've rescued that bale, get that to sit neatly, and then all we will do is take those tiny little tails around, so pinch firmly, draw one wire in one direction, get it to sit down in that gap, and we will want that to come over one more time. So you can see where it's sticking at the moment, let me flip that over. We'll then need to grip the wire and pull it to the front, getting that to sit down neatly into the little gaps between the wires that you've already used. So that's tidied away neatly. And then the same thing for the wire in the opposite direction, pinching that bale into position and then drawing that tail all the way around and finding a little gap for it to nestle away into. So I'm just twisting the bale over until I can find a space for those to sit into. If there are any scraggly bits that you really don't like, and I have made that a little bit uneven, so I'm just going to straighten it up with my improvised tool there. And there we go. You can always add another little layer of wire up at the top and put another little coil on it. Or if you think that your lower side was neat enough and the upper side is not neat, you can bring that coil and sit it upwards instead, which I think is what I will do here, because I have slightly offset that bale, but usually you can find a fix for it. So overall, I'm quite happy with how that's turned out. It passes the shake test. The weaving on the sides, this little sort of figure of eight basket is quite pretty. I do love a Labradorite, so there we go. Two different designs using the same base technique. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial, despite the fact I slightly mangled the bale just at the end there. The basics of today's tutorial is that lovely glossy figure of eight weave and how to get that done. It's still quite a wearable pendant, neat and tidy, because I've hidden it with a coil. And that's got that nice little spiral extending down onto the front of the stone. I hope to see you back here on the Gemhawks YouTube channel again very soon and thank you so much for watching with me. Bye for now.